Okay, so we have had nine convoluted and kind of confusing episodes so far that has made it really tough for us to try to suss out a winner this season. But I think I'm finally starting to see the light at the end of the tunnel. And for the first time all season, I'm like... 70% sure that I know who the winner is. And I gotta say, it's been some very nice and subtle editing if this person does end up winning. Of course, we have a lot to talk about, including this last episode, which I found to be very informative. But before we get started on all that, please make sure you hit that subscribe button below if you have not already. Here, I try to be somewhat deep and break down the intricacies of Survivor and other reality competition shows just like it. So if you're into recaps like that, then this is the channel for you. Now, let's get started. So this episode opens up being primarily about the Gata tribe ever since Sierra was voted out. We see that this vote seems to throw Sam and Rachel off their game for a little bit, but they both also seem to be doing a pretty good job of recovering and trying to move on with their game. But what I thought was the most interesting here was how we got that very long and detailed explanation on why Rachel played her shot in the dark. Just like I and a few other people had speculated, she wanted to use that shot in the dark as an opportunity to kind of suss out who wasn't feeling her on the tribe. Now, this whole thing, as we saw, ended up going nowhere. And overall, it ended up being pretty irrelevant to the main storyline at play here. And it seems to be something that the producers could have easily left out, but they chose not to. Most of the moves that are made in this game, we don't actually see on the TV edit at all. So usually whenever somebody pulls off a move that's not too relevant, they'll just gloss it over or ignore it completely but they didn't. And that could be because even though that shot in the dark was irrelevant here, Rachel's storyline as a whole isn't. This all just seems to be very good winner's content is all I'm saying. On top of that, we're also treated to all these flashbacks that are showcasing Rachel and Andy's relationship throughout the season. We're hearing Andy talk about all the times in the game that he's blindsided and betrayed Rachel. And at this point, it's starting to become increasingly clear to me that these two are pretty important to the story. And I think they'll both still be sticking around for a little bit. Honestly, I could really easily picture both of these two at the finals at this point, but it does still feel to me like this is more of Rachel's story. Next up, it's time for the immunity challenge where we hear Jeff announce that four people are going to be in danger of losing their vote after this one. Yikes. I know, I know. I'm pretty sure the entire Survivor fandom all let out a collective groan at this one. I know that most of y'all hate this gratuitous vote losing stuff anyway. And I mean, I get it too. For one, it prevents the players from actually being able to play the game. And for two, it muddies the game a lot from an audience perspective too. And it just makes it a lot more difficult to follow when you have these lost votes and idols and advantages all trying to stack on top of each other in the game. Now we do eventually find out that only one person will actually truly lose their vote at the end of the day, but still it all does seem like an unnecessary storytelling plotline if you ask me. The four losers end up playing this Jenga style mini game in order to see who would lose their vote, which I thought this part was pretty mid. I didn't love it, didn't hate it. I actually enjoyed watching this a lot more than watching people do the traditional survivor puzzles just because it's something different. But unfortunately for Caroline, she does end up losing this game and her vote here, but luckily enough for her, she doesn't seem to be in too much danger anyway. During the actual competition, it all comes down to Gabe versus Kyle in the end. And at first, it looked like Kyle was going to continue on with his winning streak. But that is until Gabe comes out of nowhere and is able to pull out the win at the end. And that's a good thing for him too, because people had definitely been whispering and talking about getting Gabe out next. Now... This is where things get a little hard to follow just because it seems like there's just been a lot of information that we haven't been given yet this season. So apparently Saul was one of the people who originally wanted to get Gabe out and just that alone was enough information to piss off Genevieve and now she wants to target Saul. Now this all just felt kind of random to me 
just because I didn't know that Genevieve and Gabe were even that close in the first place. Like, where has this relationship or storyline been all season long? See, it's the stuff like this, the stuff that's missing, that really makes me want to discount them both as winners. Genevieve's other excuse for wanting to get out Saul is because he wanted Rome out earlier in the season, but that just doesn't feel like the full story to me either. Like, I don't fully understand how it benefits Genevieve's game to turn on one of her former tribe mates when tribal lines are still kind of sort of at play but hey that's just the explanation that we're given. So now we see that Genevieve is out there working really really hard to try to get the votes put on Saul. She's able to pull all the Tuku people in and she's even pitching to Andy and Rachel too. Now I appreciate all this work and passion that we're seeing from Genevieve right now. I really do, but I do kind of start to get worried that she may be doing a little bit too much right now. Information is valuable in games like this, and it looks like Genevieve is just giving it away to anybody. So needless to say, this whole plan eventually does end up getting back around to Saul. And for a second there, it looked like there was kind of some momentum that had been building to try to get somebody like Sue or Kyle voted out instead, but even the Suvo just felt so random to me. Overall, going into Tribal, it was looking like it was gonna be either Saul or Sue going home. The Tribal Council itself is pretty standard, but eventually it goes live with all the whispering and the secrets and all that jazz. Honestly, whenever it starts to get that deep, the conversations are usually too confusing to follow along anyway, so I just like to sit back and relax. But when it was all said and done, we see that Saul is unanimously voted out at the end. I just was not expecting this one to be unanimous at all. I guess nobody wanted to be on the wrong side of the vote, but with all of the advantages and idols that are possibly at play, I guess I'm just surprised there wasn't at least a vote split or something. Saul was awesome on the show though. I really enjoyed watching him play, even if he was fumbling around for a bit. So with nine episodes down, I'm once again gonna switch things up and I'm gonna put Rachel in my number one winner spot for now. I was really hesitant to call her out as a possible winner at first because it just seemed like she was being put on the back burner of the Yellow Tribe, but I cannot deny that she has had a fantastic run these past few episodes. And the show choosing to highlight her for pretty much the first 10 minutes of this entire episode really solidified things for me. If I had to choose a second person, I guess I would go ahead and put Genevieve up there. This episode showed her being a little sloppy and her relationship with others hasn't really been explained all the way through. But at the same time, the edit has also shown her being a strategic powerhouse so many times this season, so that I just can't ignore. And of course, I still want to give an honorable shout out to Andy. The Andy truthers have been very loud and vocal the past few episodes, and trust me, I hear y'all. I really do, but it's still a little hard for me to picture him getting all the votes at the end. I just don't know if Andy's gonna have all the respect from his castmates, you know? But I'll tell you one thing, if he does end up winning, this would be one hell of a way to tell his story. I could still see Teeny making it really far and even going into the finale, but unfortunately I just can't see them as a winner anymore. The edit was just like so in your face blatant during the first half of the season, but now it's like Teeny is barely even relevant anymore. So that's it. That's my best guess after episode nine. But of course I wanna know who do you think is winning this season? Do you think it's gonna be Rachel or do you think it's someone else instead? Let me know in the comments below. No matter what ends up happening at the end of the season, I wanna shout out the editing team for making this one one hell of a wild ride. So many stories are just getting loved this season, making it really difficult to suss out who wins. Of course, I'll be here next week to recap the next episode with you all, but until then, bye.